Welcome to this recorded webinar about finding and using public data from the Toro College Libraries, recorded and shared in fall 2020. So today we're going to talk about open data versus public data. Um, we're going to go over repository examples, including Public Data Explorer, clinicaltrials.gov, um, and the United States Census, and then I'll mention some other sources for data. And then we'll talk about how to cite public data that you find in these resources and others. And finally, uh, a quick slide about how to teach data. Open data is information that has been published on government-sanctioned portals. In the best case, this data is structured, machine-readable, openly licensed, and well-maintained. So open data might be a little cleaner and easier to use and find um, than public data, but that's not always the case. Public data is data that exists everywhere else. This is information that's freely available, but not really accessible on the web. It is frequently unstructured and unruly, and its usage requirements are often vague. Um, and we're choosing to cover public data, not just open data in this webinar, because it is so much more ubiquitous. So often data you'll come across in your searches on the web um, is public, not necessarily open by these definitions. So now we're going to do some demos and I'll walk you through how to do a search for data on each of those sites that I mentioned. We'll start with the Google Public Data Explorer and I'm just going to click on this link that I have on the slide. Here's an explanation of the Google Public Data Explorer from the site. The Google Public Data Explorer makes large public interest data sets easy to explore, visualize, and communicate. As the charts and maps animate over time, the changes in the world become easier to understand. You don't have to be a data expert to navigate between different views, make your own comparisons, and share your findings. Students, journalists, and policymakers, and everyone else can play with the tool to create visualizations of public data, link to them, or embed them in their own web page. Embedded charts and links can update automatically, so you're always sharing the latest available data. Okay, so let's take a look of an example on the site. Here's the home page. You'll see some highlighted data here in this carousel that you can explore and some additional places to search for data within Google below that. For this webinar, let's take a look at a data set from the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics. So we'll click on that on the left-hand side. And we can take a look at this first result, unemployment in the US. Before you can explore the data, you'll want to select some limiters from the left-hand menu so that a graph can be made. I'll select the unemployment rate. And you can see that that populates on the y-axis. Um, in the right-hand corner, you can change the kind of graph displayed. So right here, you can play with the settings as well. And you can get the link to share your graph or embed it in a web page. So that's a kind of basic introduction to getting started with Google Public Data Explorer, but you can do so much more with it, and it's easy to learn by playing around with the site. Next, we're going to look at clinicaltrials.gov, and the URL is just what it appears to be. Clinicaltrials.gov is exactly what it sounds like, a database of privately and publicly funded clinical studies conducted around the world. This database is provided by the National Library of Medicine but just because a study is listed here does not mean that it has been evaluated by the U.S. federal government. I also want to highlight here that you can check in on clinical studies related to COVID-19, um, which is a great resource for right now. Let's try to look for a study using their search feature. Um, for status, we'll select all studies, and for condition or disease, we'll try depression just as an example. And we can select that first result and hit search. So that returns over 7,200 results and we'll need to narrow that down. Since we're looking for results, let's check completed on the status. You might wanna select another status if you're looking for a study to enroll in as a patient or if you're a researcher looking to study a similar topic. We might also try adult, the age group limiter. Um, finally, you can add any other features you'd like, but we'll just select that we're looking for results at this point, so study results, and with results, and then we'll hit apply. So we'll click on the study, 
titled Biosignatures of Latuda for Bipolar Depression. And you'll get all of this information about the study. So scrolling through, you can see all of this information. There's a tabular view in case that makes um, more sense for you and your use. And then you can get the study results on this last tab. And I also want to point out this link right here, how to read a study record, which provides a lot of great information um, if you or your students are new to working with these. And the last uh, demo we're going to do today is for the United States Census. And that is just data.census.gov. So let's go to that site. This site is a new platform to access demographic and economic data from the United States Census Bureau. The description from the site is, the vision for data.census.gov is to improve the customer experience by making data available from one centralized place so that data users can spend less time searching for data and content and more time using it. It's a pretty easy site to use and it can provide a lot of census data quickly. So it's a really great resource to be aware of. Um, and there's a lot you can do with it. And this help link um, right here in the center can provide some more in-depth guidance on how you can use it, but I just want to introduce it to you now. Um, first, there are some quick links as you scroll down the, the page, including um, some maps and visualizations, and then profiles. And if you click on the New York City profile um, right here, you'll have quick access to information about the city, including population, median household income, poverty rate, and how many residents or the percentage of residents who have achieved a bachelor's degree or higher. If you have a quick question, this page probably answers it. So it's a good first place to look with, um, for questions about New York City. Um, and for most of these, you can share the link or get the code to embed the resource on your web page by clicking on the share or export link, um, which is right here. So there's the link and there's the embed code. So we're gonna go back to the home page. You can click on the logo here to return to that search bar. And if you're just getting started with this census site, I recommend this homepage search bar, the main search bar, the main search bar over the advanced search um, because you have to have a lot of information going into the advanced search to effectively use it. Um, so as an example, let's see what information we can get. I'll do a search for Bayshore, New York. And then I'll hit search. And it's really important to put in the state because otherwise you will just get, um, you could get any town with that name. Um, so you can see this broad search returns over 5,000 total results, including tables, maps, and pages. Um, you can filter this by clicking on filter and selecting your limiters. Um, for example, we might go to topics and education and then click education again. And that's a filter. Um, or you can look on the right side, let me say down here, for related searches that might help you get closer to your data. Um, the public data, excuse me, the public use microdata here is a little more specialized and advanced. So I'm not going to go over that in this webinar, um, but it might be fun for you to play around with. Um, and just to show you what these records look like. Um, I'm going to click on the first one under tables, so educational attainment. And you'll get the estimate for the number, the margin of error, and the percentage as an estimate. Um, and you can customize the table here. Um, so there's a lot of information and a lot to parse that out, but it's a great resource. And finally, if you go back to that search result page by clicking all here, you can click on this navy blue box and it will bring you to that same profile debt for New York City, but for any um, municipality or location you are looking at. Those are just some of the many public data repositories that are available and sites to search for public data, but there's so many more. Um, there's data.gov, which is government data, GenBank, um, which is from the National Institutes for Health, Physionet, which includes NIH data, but it's hosted by MIT, um, Earth Data and Pangea, which both 
cover Earth Sciences data and the Harvard Dataverse, which covers a little bit of everything. So now that you've found data you want to use, um, how do you cite that? Standards aren't agreed upon, um, which is unfortunate. Um, so the baseline is to provide enough information to find that resource or that data again, and to follow the style, the style guidelines of whatever you're using, for example, APA. Um, so here are some examples for data. Um, you want to include the creator, the publication year, the title publisher and identifier, so the DOI. Um, and you might also include the resource type. Uh, so whatever that form that data takes, that would be the resource type. Um, and for data sites, you want to include the rights holder name if there's not an author available, um, the version number, the description of the form, and the name of the producer and its location or the URL. And if you're using something like survey data that you haven't yet published, you might want to use something like the second example there with your name, um, the year, the description of the study topic, so like assessment survey, and then note that it's unpublished raw data. But in general, you'll want to include the author, title, your publication, publisher or archive where it's housed, edition or version, and access information, so a URL, a DOI, or other persistent identifier. And how to teach data literacy. And I just want to highlight this resource here, um, which is from the University of South Florida at St. Petersburg Library, the Data Literacy Teaching Toolkit. Um, and it's a really great resource for faculty, for students who are working on their own, um, and for librarians. So I just want to show you that resource right now. Thank you for watching this Toro College Libraries webinar. For more information about the libraries, please visit torolib.org.